Just give me one second. All right. Do you want me to just start from the beginning? My name is Joshua Brewer, and I was born in Ethiopia, Africa. I used to be a goat herder with my father. I did this every day until I was eight or nine, and all this stopped when he passed away. It was out of the blue. It, it just happened one day, he was just gone. He was the only parent I had since I was a little kid. He was my everything. After my father passing away, I ran away from home and never went back. Living on the streets of Ethiopia, you have to fight for everything that you have, from the food that you eat, from the spot you sleep on. You can't do it all alone. And I was fortunate enough to be able to make friends. When I was 10 years old, I hopped on a train headed for Matahara. And we stopped in Adama. Me and my friends decided to go scavenger for food. By the time uh, I was coming back to the train, it was already moving. I was running, calling out their names. The train just sucked me under. It, just, it seemed like it just swallowed me at that moment. I remember waking up beside the train track and hearing two people arguing over my life. And I remember one of them specifically saying, he's almost dead, you should just let him die. But at the same time, I heard another man, you know, saying, no, you gotta put him in this ambulance, you gotta give him a chance. My life was never the same again. So just kind of right about where that marker is. I was in the hospital for about three months. Nobody really explained anything to me. It, it was just obvious to me that what happened to me was a reality now. At that moment, I just accepted life for what it was and just, I was just grateful to be alive. There was an Australian doctor that worked at this small hospital where I was at and he ended up taking me to the capital. And then after that, he found me a new family up north in Washington State. Being adopted in America, I wasn't very happy about it. I was always locked in my room because I couldn't really speak. And when you can't communicate, it makes everything difficult. I couldn't really communicate with my parents. They didn't understand me. They didn't know what my day was like. Being a little kid, missing three limbs, uh, it's kind of it's difficult for people to come and approach you. I had to like almost reinvent myself. And it was from, you know, how I spoke, from how I acted around people, you know, my culture, in certain ways who I am. I had to reinvent myself to fit in. Being able to adapt was the reason why I'm here and continue to push on. That's you, that's you, that's you, that's you, that's you, that's you. Stay, stay, stay. Push him, push him. When I was 15, that's probably when wheelchair basketball became an outlet for me. That, that's my meditation, basically, and I love it. For Josh, the main thing that stands out, uh, he's very keen on what to do on the defensive end. We have a same hands down, man down. Josh has one arm, but he's always contesting shots. He's always there and he's fearless. If you're playing against Josh, you better be mentally tough because Josh is never going to stop hustling. Josh is never going to stop trying to get the victory. Hey, I got two. That's weak. 
Let's go. Let's go. I needed that heat. I told you. I needed that heat. When I first got introduced to wheelchair basketball, in my head, I just kind of brushed it off. And I'm like, me, wheelchair basketball, one-handed, OK. <laughs> Let's go, Jesse. I saw kids that seemed like they had severe injury than mine that were out there putting in effort. And then I was kind of convinced, oh, maybe I can do this. It didn't seem like I was that kid that had the accent anymore. I felt more confident and I felt like an American. Inside, inside. Let's go! Let's go! So the first time I met Josh and observed Josh was at a competition where he was actually against our program with a community team. We came down for a tournament to Phoenix. I remember seeing Coach Brown and uh, his, you know, his players back then. My thought process was like, hey, here's a young man with some talent, with some skills. Uh, how can we refine that? Chair position first. Don't go in here trying to think we're going to get out rebound. Get loud. One, two, three. Wildcats. Getting into the University of Arizona, it was a dream that was far in the distance. And I've had, I've had a couple of teachers telling you it might not be possible, but in reality, that became my motivation to even try harder. Shut up! Good shot, 50! When I got into the University of Arizona, it, just, it, it felt amazing. It felt incredible. Times where I think that he's gonna give up, I don't know how he keeps fighting, but he keeps fighting and I've seen things come together for him and it's, it has been beautiful. It has been beautiful. A lot of my players, Josh included, uh, we have a diverse background. A lot of our guys have had injuries, uh, traumatic injuries, or were born under certain circumstances. And so you learn to adapt. What they're trying to do is not necessarily inspire because of their disability, but they won't inspire because of their athletic uh, abilities. The reasons why I push forward is because of my past experiences. They've taught me some lessons in life that you can only learn through experience. Those are the reasons why I am here today. They did make me who I am.